We're here to demonstrate the KLS Martin L1 rib plating system. There are three plate options. The most commonly used plate is this 10-hole construct. There's a longer 20-hole variety or version and an extra long 32-hole plate. The plates are designed to be shapeable to adapt to any rib uh, contour uh, and uh, with only three choices it certainly simplifies the, uh, the procedure. Um, we are going to demonstrate application of rib plates to a model. This is a 3D printed plastic model that is uh, an exact replica of a human seventh and eighth rib and we've uh, created a, a rib fracture here that we will uh, reduce and plate with a 10-hole plate. So the first order of business is to select your plate for a simple fracture, transverse fracture like this without any comminution or significant obliqueness. A 10-hole construct works very nicely. It's not uncommon to have to add a little bit of curvature uh, to the ribs and one can see that our plate is flatter than the rib shape and therefore we need to do a little bending. That can be done quite easily with your fingers or with clamps which I will demonstrate in a moment. I put a gentle uniform bend on that plate and it looks to me like I've actually overbent it a little bit so I'll straighten it. It's important to match the plate shape and the rib as precisely as you can to facilitate placement and limit the risk of plate failure. We have a good shape match. It's advised that one should measure the rib thickness. That can be fairly simply done with this caliper device sliding one jaw below the rib through the intercostal muscle and applying it thusly. If the rib thickness is greater than 6.5 or 7 millimeters, then it's safe to use the 7 millimeter screws and it will, the proper thickness will be indicated in this green bar right here. It's extremely unusual to have a rib so thin that this system is not usable. The uh, small Adults, little frail uh, elderly ladies in their anterior ribs may in fact be too thin, but that's the only scenario that I've encountered where the rib is too thin to use the seven millimeter screws. One may lock the caliper into its measured position, allowing you to extract it from the wound to check the indicator. After precise reduction of the fracture, and tailoring of the plate to fit the anterior rib surface, the plate should be clamped in place. There are a variety of clamps available. This is one of the simplest and most versatile. One must be careful not to crush the rib. It's not uncommon to have to make adjustments in the orientation of the plate after the clamps have been applied. This is the Max driver. It's a torque limiting screwdriver which allows rapid and reliable delivery of the seven millimeter screws. I prefer to put in the peripheral or distal most screws first, which in case the plate needs to be readjusted, it's easier to do it from that attachment point. 
The orientation is important. These screws are converging and there are small guides which direct the orientation of your screw. The torque limiting nature of this screwdriver prevents over tightening. It's not infrequent to have to add a little bit of torque to ensure that the plate and the screws are locked together. That's done easily with this manual driver. Only a gentle pressure is required to advance the screw and that limits the risk of re losing your reduction. A minimum of four screws is recommended per side. And the narrow footprint of the KLS plate allows for multiple screws in a short distance. I am confirming uh, the locking mechanism and, and, and guaranteeing that the plate is, the screw is locked to the plate. And that's, that is the final construct. The plates are flexible but sturdy and they allow for an optimal amount of micro motion at the fracture line to ensure optimal healing. With this close-up view of the screw plate configuration, one can see the converging nature of the screws. This is designed to minimize the risk of screw pullout. Next we'll demonstrate repair of a fracture that's a little more complex. It's comminuted and, and oblique and this area of the rib has uh, more curvature uh, and uh, requires uh, a more complex bend. A 10-hole plate would not be long enough for this construct, so we will select the 20-hole variety and cut it down to size. I want to have at least four screws on each side of the fracture line, two in the middle, four additional, so we'll cut the plate there. Pin the plate so it doesn't go flying. We're smoothing down the cut edge. So now we have a plate of the appropriate length, which will accommodate the oblique nature of the fracture with m adequate anchoring points. This rib is curved in this orientation. We will add some smile or frown to this rib, or to this plate, with this set of bending instruments. These are designed to capture the plate in the jaws thusly. A second instrument is added like so. And the handles are moved apart. Slowly adding some frown. This aspect of bending needs to be done slowly and carefully not to change the configuration of the plate significantly and one can always bend a little bit no more as needed but it's hard to go back. Bending plates back also reduces the strength of the plate considerably. Need a little more curve. We're getting close. 
Our plate is well matched with the appropriate contour. This is a different variety of plate holding forceps, affectionately known as the candle snuffer. Once again, unicortical 7 millimeter self-drilling screws oriented in a converging fashion. Gentle pressure. The optimal orientation of these screws is approximately 20 degrees from, from perpendicular. One learns to judge that range uh, after applying these screws a few times. With a little practice, it becomes pretty straightforward. This allows for 40 degrees of divergence or convergence, depending on your point of view, between the adjacent screws. There's a few degrees of tolerance built in which allows you to be Im imperfect with this orientation. As exampled here, this screw is proud and needs to be advanced manually to lock to the plate, thusly. One advantage of the candle snuffer clamp is that it can oftentimes be used as the only clamp, leaving your screw holes available without the need for multiple clamps. This is the Angulus right-angled screwdriver. It's a very useful instrument when applying screws to areas of the plate that are, that are in the extremes of your incision, uh, under the scapula, for example, or in a, in a paraspinous location. It has a very low profile. The orientation of the screw is identical to the long-handled screwdriver, 20 degrees off of the midline. One should avoid pushing too firmly initially until the screws engage to avoid displacing the rib from your plate. Once you have good bone purchase, it's a steady, smooth motion down to the plate. When you start to meet resistance, one should slow down and be very careful, applying significant pressure, but a slow turn to lock the plate. One should avoid popping off and scoring the, through the, the heads. That would make subsequent tightening or removal very difficult. So sometimes I put it between my fingers like that to get a little more torque. 